Today we're starting with a story. It's a story of two brothers by the name of Romulus and Remus. Romulus and Remus were the sons of a lady by the name of Rhea. Rhea was the daughter of King Numitor. Uh, however, Numitor was killed by this guy, Aurelius, uh, and Rhea was told, you can't have kids. But oops, guess what? She had two of them, Romulus and Remus. When Amulius found out about this, he thought, okay, cool. I'll just put them in the River Tiber and they'll drown. However, the River Tiber had different ideas because of course this is a legend and rivers can have ideas and it washed them to shore now you might think two babies in the wilderness that's a bad thing especially when confronted by a wolf and of course this wolf is going to want to eat them right no wrong again because this is a legend the wolf decides hey those babies are cute i'll take care of them and the wolf loves them, takes care of them, and she is rewarded for this care by being shot with an arrow. The hunter who shot the wolf comes across and sees these babies and says, Oh, wow, me and my wife were never able to have babies, so we'll take care of these like our own. So the hunter and his wife take care of the babies, and they grow up to be big, strong, tall men, uh, Again, their names are Romulus and Remus. Now, Romulus and Remus think, hey, wouldn't it be awesome to build a city? And they agree to do this. However, they can't agree on the location of that city. They both have their favorite hill. Romulus says, hey, this hill's perfect. And Remus says, no, no, this hill. This hill's the bomb. So they settle it like brothers would, uh, or at least these brothers and they fight and Romulus kills Remus. So Rome was settled on the Palatine Hill, which is the moral of this story. If you want to get something done, you kill your brother. Hey, all you amazingly intelligent students out there. First of all, let me say, I do not condone any form of brother killing. So please don't email me telling me that that is wrong. I know. It does make me happy that my brothers didn't have access to swords when they were younger. The story of Romulus and Remus illustrates the fact that the Romans valued strength. And today we're going to take a look at the real origins of the Roman people. Let's go ahead and take a look at this map. Historians don't know who the first Roman kings were. But what they do know is that the first group of people, the people who built the city of Rome, were called Latins. The Latins are illustrated here in yellow. If you remember our last video, you'll notice that the yellow area is the same area Rome is located on. Now, the city of Rome was founded sometime around 700 BC, and eventually it would spread from the Palatine Hill to seven hills. It was huge. So have you ever heard anyone say something like, hey, she has her father's eyes, or he has his mother's nose? You know, ever since Raylan's been born, I keep hearing, hey, he looks like you. Poor kid. Anyway, culture's a lot like that, too, where you get a little bit of culture from here, a little bit of culture from there, and eventually it all comes together and forms your culture. Rome is no exception to this, and they borrowed a lot of ideas from their neighbors, the Etruscans and the Greeks. Now, the Etruscans are a group of people that live north and south of Rome. If you look at the map, you can see it's that purple area. And they would have a huge influence on Roman culture. In fact, eventually the Etruscans would control Rome. In fact, the three last Roman kings were Etruscans. The other group that had a huge impact on Roman culture were the Greeks. Now, you remember back when we were talking about the Greeks, we talked about how the Greeks set up colonies in the island of Sicily and in southern Italy. And you can see they're orange on the map here. So the Etruscans and Greeks had a huge influence on culture. So let's look at some specific examples. Let's go ahead and start with the Etruscans. Now, the Etruscans had a huge influence on Roman engineering. They introduced two major elements into Roman engineering. The first one is the arch. Now, you know an arch has two pillars and then kind of a semicircle on top. And then what happens is you put a keystone in the top to hold that half circle together. And arches are very strong and they're very useful 
in creating huge buildings. The second thing that the Etruscans added to Roman engineering was the cuniculus. The cuniculus is an underground trench that's very useful for irrigation. So the Etruscans added to engineering, but they also added to the ideas of entertainment and sport. There were two especially bloody competitions that the Romans took from the Etruscans that they thought were very entertaining. The first one was slave fighting. At a funeral, two slaves from the person who died would fight to the death. And then, of course, the winner would also be executed. The second sporting event that the Romans took from the Etruscans were chariot races. Now, you might think, oh, chariot race, that's peaceful enough. Except the chariots had a tendency to turn over and the people would be crushed by wheels or other horses. These chariot races and slave battles would eventually evolve into gladiator fights, where gladiators would fight against each other or against wild animals. And this would draw huge crowds and stadiums would be filled with Romans uh, cheering on their favorite gladiators. So the Etruscans had a big influence on the culture of the Romans. Let's take a look at the Greeks and how they influenced Roman culture. And let's start by looking at architecture. If you remember back to our discussion on the Greeks, you can picture in your head, hopefully, the Parthenon, that huge temple to Athena with the big columns on it. The Romans built similar buildings. They took Greek, the Greek style of architecture and applied it to their own cities. Eventually, the Romans would use concrete to build even more massive buildings, like the Colosseum. Moving on, let's talk about writing. Now, the Greeks had an indirect influence on the Roman alphabet. Let's see if we can follow this. The Greeks had an alphabet that the Etruscans borrowed and changed around a bit, and then the Romans took the Etruscan alphabet and then altered it again. So the Greeks had an indirect influence on the Roman alphabet. However, the way the Romans used the alphabet had much more in common with the way the Greeks used the alphabet. For example, they took important documents and they carved it into stone tablets or metal tablets and posted those around the city. Also, thinking about stories. Roman storytellers also built onto stories told by the Greeks. For example, Virgil tells the story of Aeneas, a Trojan prince who flees to Italy after the Trojan War. This story links the Romans to the ancient Trojans. But stories weren't the only kind of art that the Romans borrowed from the Greeks. They also had a huge influence on the physical arts, statues and paintings. In fact, the style is so closely intertwined, they call it the Greco-Roman style. If you think about the pottery from ancient Greece, Romans collected this pottery and tried to emulate it or, or make pottery that was very similar to it. They also used the Greek painting styles as models for their own work. Not to say that they didn't come up with their own styles. The Greeks were very interested in the human body and its form. However, the Romans became more interested in sculpting their leaders. Uh, they would create busts of people, you know, which is like their shoulders up and these leaders would look as magnificent as the actual leaders did themselves. The final influence we're going to talk about on Roman culture is Greek mythology. We studied a lot of Greek mythology when we were talking about Greece, and what the Romans did was borrow from other religions. So they would take their own gods and meld them with the gods of religions they encountered, including the Greeks. Think about the gods that you know from ancient Greece. You've got Zeus, you've got Aphrodite, you've got Ares. The Romans took these gods and gave them Roman names. So instead of Zeus, Aphrodite, and Ares, you now have Jupiter, Venus, and Mars. So you can see the Romans gained a lot of their culture from their neighbors, the Etruscans and the Greeks. We call this idea, this idea of getting pieces of culture from other cultures around us, cultural diffusion. I know that's a big word, right? It basic idea is that cultures influence their neighbors and, and give parts of their own culture to their neighbors. And while the word cultural diffusion might sound confusing, it's really not. We've already seen an example of this in the agricultural revolution. Think about how the agricultural revolution spread from Southwest Asia and spread outwards as more and more people were exposed to it. That's just another example of this idea of cultural diffusion. 
Were you paying attention? Answer the next couple of questions to find out. Briefly summarize the story of Romulus and Remus. What is one Etruscan and one Greek influence on Roman culture? How has Roman culture changed? Give an example of cultural diffusion in the United States. Explain how this is an example of cultural diffusion.